So we've got one more equilibrium problem up here. This is, uh, we have this uniform density rod. It's attached to a wall by a hinge, and there's a, a string that connects to the wall and to the edge of the rod here at a 30 degree angle. And so, yeah, we expect this rod to be in equilibrium. It's in static equilibrium. It's, it's at rest and it's remaining at rest. Um, so it's in equilibrium. So we're going to go back to uh, well, what we do with these equilibrium or equilibrium strategy is to uh, start by drawing in the forces. So let's, let's put in the forces on this object. Now it does say it's a uniform density rod so gravity is pulling down everywhere on the rod but it is equivalent. Uh, we can do an equivalent calculation by putting by considering all the mass of this object to be uh, at its center. So we can consider gravity to act here, our force of gravity, all right, which we know it will, be, uh, will be mg, that's fine. Um, <clears throat> what did I want to say there? Forgot. Oh, um, the, it, uh, 20 newton, oh, so the force of gravity is given 20 newtons. Force of gravity is given 20 newtons. Now, um, and we'll just work, continue to always work in SI units, so uh, we won't have to worry about the units. We also know that there is going to be a tension force. That string can, it must be pulling on the, on the edge there, and so there's a tension force. And now here's where things are uh, maybe a little unclear, is if we look at this hinge, we expect this hinge to, you know, possibly have some force. And actually we can see it must have some force because uh, this, this, for, this force has a uh, downward vertical component. This force has an upward vertical component. Um, so it's not really clear whether the hinge is exerting uh, a vertical component at this point, but certainly it must be exerting a horizontal component in the, our um, positive x direction over here in order for uh, the sum of those forces in the x direction to be zero. So, well, really what I'm going to do is I'm just going to guess what the third force looks like here. So I'll call it the force of the hinge. Um, I'm just going to guess that it points uh, to the right and a bit up. So maybe something like this. Force of the hinge. All right. Now, why I'm, I'm not seeming to worry too much about that is because we actually can do this problem in one step uh, only using our requirement for zero net torque, zero total torque for equilibrium um, type problem. Um, and we know that it, uh, in order to calculate any torque, there has to be specified an axis point. And so here's where we can uh, work things out. If we choose this as our axis point, right here at the hinge, that's going to help us out quite a bit because what's the lever arm distance going to be for the hinge force? Well, when I draw that dotted line, it passes right through the axis point, and so it has zero lever arm distance. The hinge force has zero lever arm distance, and so it has zero, it creates zero torque about that hinge. Um, and so <clears throat> that doesn't create any torque, and so uh, I'll just put a zero here for the hinge force. And now we can go through. Uh, and find the torques due to each one of the other forces. And so we've got our 20 Newton, um, we've got our 20 Newton gravitational force and the lever arm distance, the shortest distance between that line and the axis point. Actually, it's not even given because it doesn't tell you how long the rod is. So what do we do well, when it's not given? Well, after a brief moment of panic, uh, we just put in we just say, hey, this whole thing, I'm going to define that length to be length L. And so in that case, based on our definition, we can just put in L over 2 here. Now, actually, according to uh, what I said before, normally we consider torques that tend to rotate an object uh, clockwise uh, to have a, a negative torque. So I'll, I'll change that to negative. Um, and now we can go and look at our the torque created by our third force, which is the, the uh, tension here. And so I need to take my tension force and multiply it by some lever arm. And we can see 
uh, that that, if I held the access point fixed and pulled, it would tend to rotate the object counterclockwise. So we can go ahead and put in a, a plus here. Um, and so let's draw our dotted line now through the, oops, through the tension force that's go, gonna go right along that string. And so I wanna find the shortest distance, and this is gonna get a little messy here. The shortest distance, this is the length I want between the axis and that dotted line. Again, we have this nice right triangle. Maybe I'll redraw it down here. Something like this. And we do know some information. Well, this is now defined to be length L. Um, this is 30 degrees. And so we can find this would be L times the sine of 30, L sine 30. And so we can plug that in, L sine 30 degrees equals zero. And so uh, it's nice for us that the L that we, can define, that we defined, we can divide through the whole equation and the L is gone. So we can divide through by L. The sine of 30 is one half. And so let's see what I get here. I'm gonna get minus 10 plus, and so I can solve for this and I'll find that the tension force is 20. 20 newtons, we're up here. Answer B. And, okay, good. So that's it for that one.